chers apprenants, en cette période de confinement, le gouvernement, à travers les ministères sectoriels de l'éducation et de la formation, vous invite à suivre vos enseignants dans des séances de rappel de cours, exercices et devoirs, matière par matière, sous la supervision pédagogique des directeurs d'enseignement et des inspecteurs spécialisés dans leur discipline. Ces rappels de cours sont mis à votre disposition à travers les radios, les télévisions et les applications web. En cette période de Covid-19, suivez les cours, faites vos exercices et continuez d'apprendre vos leçons en attendant le retour à l'école. Hello, dear students of Premier. I am uh, Mr. Bojisi Yao from uh, Lycée Tokuen Solidarité. Today, we are going to, as usual, continue the revision of some of the lessons that you have already done in your classes. And the team you are going to consider today is uh, British Studies. And the test we are going to consider is uh, the schools, taken from your reading books, book two, for senior secondary school at page 71. But before everything, we are going to correct the assignment you were given uh, at the last session. And this assignment is about uh, translation. And I believe all of you tried it before. So if you really you have tried, then take out your workbook so that we proceed with the correction. So the instruction was translate, translate into English these uh, sentences using uh, the exclamatory words that uh, you have uh, learned last time. And the first sentence is, quel ont, quel ont. So what can that uh, sentence uh, mean in uh, English? So in English, we simply say, what a shame, what a shame. So quel ont is uh, what a shame. Good. The second sentence is, uh, Je n'ai jamais vu une si belle voiture. Je n'ai jamais vu une si belle voiture. So, what can this sentence mean in English? So, in English, we simply say, I have never seen such a nice car. I have never seen such a nice car. So in the first sentence, you say, what a shame. So there, the exclamatory expression there is, uh, what a, uh, what a, uh, plus a uh, noun. So when we use a what a, uh, the key word is a uh, noun. So what a, uh, plus a noun, which is a uh, shame. Now if you take the second sentence, I've never seen such a nice car. So there, the exclamatory expression is, uh, such a, a, such a also is used with a, a noun. And that noun is preceded by uh, an adjective. And we know that uh, an adjective uh, only qualifies a noun. So that's why you have uh, such a, a nice car. So I've never seen uh, such a, a nice car. Thank you. So we move to the sentences uh, given to you in English that you have to translate into French. And uh, sentence number three is, uh, how peaceful my night was. How peaceful my night was. So what can that be in French? Que ma nuit a été paisible. Ou bien ma nuit a été tranquille. Ou bien comme ma nuit a été paisible. Voilà ce qu'on peut dire euh, comme équivalent de la phrase, how peaceful my night was. Il y a d'autres, d'autres façons encore de dire, mais nous allons juste retenir celle-ci. La quatrième phrase, these exercises are so easy. 
these exercises are so easy. So the, the French version will be que c'est facile ces exercices. Que c'est facile ces exercices. Il y a d'autres manières encore de dire la même chose, mais nous allons nous attarder sur celle-ci. OK. We've just uh, corrected the, the homework or the assignments. Now, I would like uh, to split out uh, the main objective of uh, this uh, lesson. And uh, at the end of this lesson, firstly, you should be able to revise the vocabulary words to complete sentences. And uh, secondly, you should be able to use since, for, and ego to write sentences correctly. That is what I'm expecting from you during this lesson. Now, we move to the main theme, which is the school. So the lesson, the test at the school, as we are not going to read it, I'm going to give you a brief summary to refresh your memory with that test. And uh, the summary is saying, the test, the school is about uh, the educational system for England and uh, Wales. And this concerns the different level of uh, education or schools and uh, the required ages from uh, students or children to attend them. We must notice that in uh, England and Wales, all the children have uh, a minimum of 11 year compulsory full-time education. So in Wales, every child has uh, a minimum of 11 year compulsory full-time education. And in England and Wales, there are public schools, private schools, and uh, vocational schools. And the different uh, examinations are CSE, which stands for Certificate of Secondary Education Examination. We have also O-Level, which is the abbreviation of uh, General Certificate of uh, Education at Ordinary Level and uh, the Advanced Level GCA, which is uh, very important. Why is it very important? It's because uh, it is on the result of uh, this examination that uh, universities and uh, polytechnics uh, choose uh, their students. That's why this uh, examination is very, very important in uh, England and uh, Wales. Okay, dear student of Premier, this is uh, uh, briefly the summary of uh, the test. Now you move to the first activity vocabulary revision. So, we have selected five words that we are going to revise with you, and these words are taken from the test, the schools. The very first one is a, a handicraft. Everybody, handicraft. Can someone repeat after me? Handicraft. Very good. And uh, the second one is uh, to endow. To endow. Good. The third one is uh, to enroll. To enroll. The fourth one is uh, autonomous. 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 And the last expression for today is uh, vocational school. Vocational school. Now, what is a uh, handicraft? What is a uh, uh, to uh, endow? to enroll or autonomous and vocational school. So when we say handicrafts, quickly I can say that uh, it is uh, any kind of occupation that uh, requires uh, a skill of uh, hand, skill of uh, hand. To endow, to endow is uh, to provide uh, somebody with uh, something uh, naturally or freely. And to enroll is uh, to enter in a list, to register. And uh, autonomous is uh, to be independent, self-governed, or uh, sovereign. And vocational school is uh, any kind of school 
which teaches uh, skills uh, that are for specific uh, jobs. Now that you, you understand the words, we are going to try to match them with their various uh, meaning. So the practical exercise number one or part A is uh, to match the words and expression with uh, their meanings. So we have uh, two columns here. In the first column, we have the words, which are number one, handicrafts, number two, to enroll, number three, to endow, number four, autonomous, number five, uh, a vocational school. And now the second column is uh, containing the definitions or the meanings of uh, the words. So, A, to enter in a list or to insert or to register. The second definition is uh, to provide with something freely or naturally. The third definition is uh, independent, self-governed or sovereign. The fourth definition is a school that teaches skills that are necessary for particular jobs. And the last, which is E, manual skill, an occupation requiring skill with uh, the hands. So we have uh, the words and uh, the uh, definition of meaning. Now, we are going to take them one by one and uh, match them with uh, their definition. We take the first one, number one, a handicraft. A handicraft. So a handicraft, so what is it? Is it a A or B or C or D or E? A handicraft? Yes, what is it? It's a noun, a handicraft. So it's a A, one, E. It is a E, which is what a manual skill, an occupation requiring skill with uh, the hand. That is a, a handicraft. Now number two, to enroll, to enroll. It is a verb there, to enroll. So is it a, a or B or C or D? Because you have already selected uh, E. So E is canceled. Now it remains A, B, C, D. Now, to enroll, what is it? Is it to enter in a list? Or to provide with? Because we have only two verbs. So, to enroll is a, a to A, which is a, to enter in a list or to insert or to register. Number three is a, to endow. To endow. Now, we have already selected A. a. We have already selected a, E, it remains a B, C, and D. So which one is matching uh, number three? To in the, what is it? What is it? Yes, you have tried. So to in the is uh, B, to provide uh, with uh, something freely or naturally. Now we move to number four, the fourth word which is uh, autonomous, and there it is uh, an uh, adjective. Autonomous is an adjective. Now, it remains C and D, because uh, A, B, E are already used. Now C and uh, D, so autonomous. So C or D, C or D. D, are you sure? No, D cannot go there. So the correct one is uh, C. Autonomous is uh, independent, self-governed or sovereign. And uh, the last expression is uh, a vocational school. A vocational school. We have already selected A. We have already selected B, C, and E. So the remaining letter is uh, D. The remaining letter is uh, D. So a vocational school is uh, a school that teaches uh, skills uh, that are necessary for particular jobs. Very good, uh, dear student. So, we move to the second exercise on our vocabulary, the vocabulary words. So here, you are going to fill in gaps. You are going to fill in gaps with the given words, the same words, handicrafts, 
endowed, enrolled, autonomous, and uh, vocational school. So we are going to take the sentences uh, one by one. So, number one, three-year-old children can only be that gap at nursery schools in Togo. Three-year-old children can only be that at uh, nursery schools in uh, Togo. So, what is the word that you can select to fill in this gap? Is it a, a handicap? Endowed, enrolled, autonomous, or vocational school? Which is it? Three-year-old children can only be enrolled. Can only be enrolled at a nursery school. That means a, a, a child of uh, only three years can never go to primary school. So it's, it might be in a nursery school. Very good. The second sentence is, uh, the education authorities are gap bodies who created schools for children. The education authorities are gap bodies who create schools for children. Now, which one of the word is uh, appropriate there? Handicrafts, endow, autonomous, or vocational school. So the education authorities are autonomous bodies who create schools for children. Okay, so now you are going to try it. Even if you didn't succeed the first and the second, don't worry, this is your turn. Number three, my sister is attending a gap to become a seamstress. My sister is attending a gap to become a seamstress. Yes, to attend. Yes, mind the verb, to attend. What can we attend? Handicraft, endowed, enrolled, autonomous, or vocational school? Yes. Yes. So, my sister is attending a vocational school to become a seamstress. Very good. Now you move to the fourth first sentence, which is an occupation requiring skill with the hands is an occupation requiring skill with the hands is gap. Yes. What is it? Is it uh, uh, to enroll, autonomous, vocational school, handicraft? What is it? Yes? Very good. You have tried. Okay. So an occupation requiring skill with the hands is a, a handicraft. So you can see that in the word handicraft, we have uh, the, the word hand. So the correct word is uh, handicraft. Very good. And the last sentence is the money will be used to gap the school and research facility. The money will be used to gap the school and research facility. So, what is the word that we have not used? What is it? What is it? Can someone help me? The money will be used to endow. The money will be used to endow to provide the school with what? With a, a research facility. Very good. So we are done with uh, the vocabulary, our first activity. Now we move to the second activity, which is uh, grammar revision. And from our test, we have also selected this, uh, a grammar point concerned what the use of uh, since, for, and uh, ego. That uh, we are going to revise uh, with you. And uh, we are going to take them one by one. So what is common to, what is common? Why all the time we learn since, 
four and a go. And whenever you hear sins, you complete by uh, four and uh, a go. Why? Because uh, the three expressions are you are referred to time. Are referred to time. They are all used in time expressions. That's why all the time we learn them together. Thank you. So if you take the first one, let us remind some uh, rules of their uses. Since is used in three different ways. We use scenes in three different ways. The first way, it is used as a preposition. Since it's used as a preposition to show the beginning or the starting point of an action. It's used to show the beginning or the starting point of an action. And here it is used in a present perfect or present perfect continuous or present perfect, past perfect. And an example is uh, our country, Togo, has become independent since uh, 27th of April, uh, 1960. Now, the second use of uh, since is, uh, is used as a conjunction. Since is used as a, a conjunction. So, and, uh, and this, the example we, we, we have there is that since you don't have money, you cannot come. And the, the third use of since is that it is used as an adverb with uh, the simple past or past perfect for an event in the past until a later past event uh, or until uh, now. Until now. So look at these patterns. Look at these patterns that uh, I proposed to you. So there we use uh, it is plus duration plus since plus subject, plus simple past. And uh, it was, plus duration, plus since, plus subject, plus past perfect. That's why we say that it is used as an adverb in a simple past or past perfect for an event in the past until a later past event. Okay, and an example is, it is six months since coronavirus appeared in China. It is a six month since coronavirus appeared in China. Or it is two months since we stopped going to school. Another one, it was 25 years since I had left my village. So if you, can, you can remember that uh, it is plus uh, duration, six months, plus since, plus uh, appeared, which is uh, in a simple past. And uh, the last uh, example, it was 25 years. 25 years is what? Uh, it is uh, the duration preceded by uh, was, which is uh, in a simple past. Now, plus uh, had left, which is uh, past uh, perfect. Thank you. So let's move to for. For is used as a preposition to express the duration of uh, an action. And it is used in a present perfect or present perfect uh, continuous. And uh, as an example, we have, I have been teaching English for 21 years now. The pattern is uh, subject plus verb plus present perfect or present perfect continuous plus object plus uh, for plus uh, duration. Or subject plus verb in past uh, present perfect in negative form plus object plus for plus uh, duration. And as an example to confirm this is uh, we haven't gone to school for two months. We haven't gone to school for two months. Month. Okay, so now this, the third expression is a go. A go is an adverb used in an expression of time to show how far in the past something happened. How far in the past something happened. And uh, it is used in a simple past tense. It's used in a simple past tense. Okay, thank you very much. So let's, let's see uh, some... Uh, Practical uh, exercise. So here, very simply, you are going to complete uh, sentences uh, with uh, since for or ago, basing on uh, the various uh, rules that we have just uh, given. So number one, the coronavirus has been killing people around the world. Uh, that gap uh, five months now. So are we using since for or ago? Can we use ago there? 
No. Can you use a uh, since there? No. Why? Why? Because uh, we are talking about uh, the duration. The coronavirus has been killing people around the world for five months now. And the second one, the education authorities have closed the schools gap 20 March 2020. So when uh, did we stop going to school? That is the, the beginning of our staying home. So that's the, the beginning of the action. So the education authorities have closed the school uh, since uh, 24th of March uh, 2020. And the last one, 20 years uh, the gap, the roads were very bad. 20 years gap, the roads were very bad. Now, what is it? The answer is uh, ago. So 20 years ago, the roads were very bad. So you can see that uh, this sentence is uh, in uh, simple past tense. The verb were is used there in uh, simple past past. That's why you see that uh, ego is uh, strictly used in a uh, simple past tense. Nice. Let's la go to the last uh, uh, exercise. Rewrite the sentences using since, for, and ego so that uh, they have the same uh, meaning. So, the first series of uh, sentences is A1. It is three years since uh, we met. Now, how are we going to rewrite this sentence by beginning it with uh, we haven't? We haven't. So, and uh, the second one is uh, we. So, if you start with uh, we haven't, so that means you are obliged to start to continue this, the sentence that way. So, we haven't met for three years. We haven't met for three years. And uh, we. The second sentence is, is beginning with a we. What are you going to say? To rewrite it by, say, by using a ego. So, we met three years ago. Now, the second, the second sentence, here we use the sentence with a for. Now, we are going to use it with a since and a ego. So, she hasn't called for an hour. She hasn't called for an hour. So it is. And she. So how are you going to write it, uh, the, the sentence B? By using uh, since. So you have to write it uh, with uh, since. Because you have already used uh, for. Now it remains uh, since and uh, ego. So it is. Try. It is plus duration plus since plus uh, simple past or plus past perfect. So it is an hour since she called. It is an hour since she called. Very good. Now she. Now know that you have to use uh, with, with uh, ego. Ego. So she she called an hour ago. She called an hour ago. Very good. Now we are going to have a sentence with uh, ego that we have to write with uh, since and uh, for. I went to Palime six months ago. I went to Palime six months ago. Now I haven't. And uh, it was. So you start the sentence with uh, I haven't. That means uh, you have to complete it with uh, for. Yes. I haven't gone to Palime for six months. I haven't gone to Palime for six months. And uh, it was. It was, yes, it was, uh, the answer is, it was uh, six months since uh, I had gone to Palimi. It was uh, six months since uh, I had gone to Palimi. Okay, dear student, uh, here we are at the end of our second uh, practical uh, exercise. Now we are going to recapitulate before I leave you. So this morning we started uh, with uh, the correction of uh, the assignment concerning the translation. After that, we went through the vocabulary words. Vocabulary, the words are handicraft to endow, to endow, to enroll, autonomous, 
and uh, vocational school. And the last point we dealt with uh, is the grammar points, the revision of uh, since, for, and uh, ago. So, but before I leave you, I have uh, a shorter assignment for you, divided into two. You have uh, to complete it with a since, for, and a go. And the first sentence is, uh, it has been raining gap this morning. It has been raining gap this morning. And the second sentence is, we have been thinking about you gap you left. We have been thinking about you gap you left. And uh, uh, you have also a sentence to rephrase. It is four years since I went to Ireland. The three B, I have, you start with the three B and you complete, I have, and the three C, I, and you complete uh, them with uh, a go and uh, for. So here we are at the end of uh, uh, the session. So before I leave you, I want to give you these notes. Work as you work and play as you play. This is the way to be cheerful and gay. All that you do, do it with your mind. Things done by half are never done well. So work as you work and play as you play. On this note, I say bye-bye. Chers élèves, nous voici encore retrouvés pour continuer nos sessions de révision. Nos sessions de révision. Et aujourd'hui, ça concerne les élèves de première. Et le thème que nous avons visité aujourd'hui, c'est « British Studies ». Donc, on a parlé de, euh, de contexte britannique. Et le test qui a servi, c'est « The Schools », les écoles. Après cela, on a fait la correction, l'exercice qu'on avait donné à la séance passée qui concernait la traduction. Et c'est suite à ça qu'on a fait la révision de quelques mots de vocabulaire et après ça, la grammaire qui concerne « since »,« for » et « ego », les expressions auxquelles vous êtes déjà habitués. Donc, ce n'est que la révision que nous avons faite avec vous. Merci beaucoup et au revoir.